It wasn't coronavirus, it was Casual Friday that killed the major retailers. Hi, I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, the fascinating story of 2020 that doesn't get as much attention is the alarming number of bankruptcies of large major retailers, and specifically in the sector that deals with nicer clothing, business clothing, as they used to call it. Um, major retailers, including Lord & Taylor, the parent company of both uh, Men's Warehouse and Joseph A. Bank, a, a company called Tailored Brands, Brooks Brothers, uh, J.C. Penney's, Neiman Marcus, J. Crew, and I don't really know anything about J. Crew, so forgive me if I got them wrong. Uh, but basically, these stories are being run under headlines like suits are out and stretchy pants are in. Uh, now, some of these companies are running into financial trouble because the COVID uh, problem compounds a pre-existing debt problem that they had. But in large part, Bill, business analysts seem to think it's their failure to adapt to the changing tastes of America's uh, business dress codes that has resulted in the death of these companies or the suffering of these companies. Anyway, Bill, do you think this is a natural thing or, or a bad thing that we're losing touch with the suit tie vest kind of decorum? Well, I think it's both. Um, as far as the adapting, if you could remind me uh, in a moment, adapting to changing dress styles, I'll come back to that in a second. But it sounds to me like this particular sector, um, we'll just we'll just say business clothing for the sake of it, is on the is on the wrong end of two social trends. One of them is the uh, is the e-tail trend, the the ever increasing um, preference for people to buy things online, uh, and the and the slow but steady erosion of, of uh, traffic and revenues to shopping malls. So whether or not they were in the uh, nice clothing business or not, malls are suffering, all retailers are suffering as a result of basically Amazon and, and, and everything it, uh, that it represents. But I suspect that these companies are leading the uh, bankruptcies because they're also the victim of a second cultural wave that is going in the same direction in, in terms of being against the way they want to swim. And that is the um, is the ever increasing uh, move towards casual casualness in society. Um, it's inconceivable. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be the first person to own up to it. I I dress like I dress unless I'm on camera, more or less the way I dressed when I was twelve. You know, I wear <laughs> jeans and a t-shirt here in in California. Um, I, I was probably much better dressed when I was twelve. Uh, it's interesting to see. Now you can take some examples that just seem that are just plain silly. Uh, you can see uh, pictures for people on the beach at Santa Monica from 1903, and the men are wearing suits and ties, and and the the ladies are in they're not in one piece bathing suits; they're in something that's not even close to a bathing suit. That that you know seems a little ridiculous today, and, and probably rightfully so. It wasn't very much comfort, I'm sure, back in those days. But put that aside for a second. Um, people. Uh, used to wear. I, I clearly remember um, not being able to, or, or no, not allow, not having my parents allow me to consider getting on board an airplane unless I was wearing a suit and a tie. Those days took off in the '70s, at least I would say. You so, got yeah, shorts in is, church. You've got PJs at Walmart. I mean, what's this country coming to? What's it coming to? Um, as a person who generally dresses pretty casually, lives in a warm climate, I, I got to tell you, I like being comfortable. But as a person who also knows how to tie a, a, a half Windsor knot, there are um, there are times when uh, when the formality of an occasion is warranted, and and it seems to me that as life gets more and more casual, the more dramatic getting dressed up is, just because of the contrast. I'm interested in your uh, thoughts on what, if anything, we lose as a result of this. I remember my father-in-law, who was a uh, bank president for many years, small local banks. And mm -hmm. um, I remember when they switched the dress code from you know business dress, uh, which was a suit and tie at that point, uh, to polo shirts and, and how disturbing this was for him. Um, the retailer where I work actually has relaxed its dress code for male sa salespeople during uh, in this kind of wake of, or during the, the pandemic kind of wave. And I noticed that I'm one of only a small handful of men who continues to wear a necktie to work. Everybody seemed relieved by the move and, and is, you know, opening the collar. Do we lose anything from that? Is there a sense of, of dignity and formality and authority that comes from the business suit? 
Dignity, formality, and authority are all great adjectives, and, and that's that's certainly leaving. But the one term that I had when you started asking this particular question was, I think we lose respect. I mean, when I think it over, the reasons I, the times when I become uh, dressed, which is not dressed by the 1900 standards, but suit and a tie kind of thing, I do it as a sign of respect. I do it during speaking engagements uh, at at nighttime, usually just a blazer and a button down shirt in the daytime, but never ever, ever a t-shirt or a polo shirt or anything like that. Uh, to me, it is. It, it may be vestigial now, but it's, it's a sign of respect. And I think that's why um, storekeepers and so on would, would wear a suit and a tie and as, as a sign of respect for their customers. There's a generation that's, it's, I happen to know one person who, who still believes this way, and he's in his late 80s, but essentially this generation is gone and, and probably long gone, who would not conceive of going outside without a tie. Just inconceivable. This, this gentleman I know, is a, he's a great actor. Uh, uh, he's worn um, a tie or a bow tie every single day of his life since he was probably three. Um, and, and there's an awful lot to be said about that. Uh, you know, Scott, I think probably the best way to to kind of get a handle on what we've lost with this trend towards casualness is a is a is just a gobsmacking I took, uh, I want to say it was about six, seven years ago or something. Uh, there was a movie that came out several years ago called The Artist, which I just adored. And if you haven't seen it, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's a silent film, but it was made just, I want to say around 2015, somewhere in that 17 ballpark, something like that. And the artist is the story about a, a movie star in the in the in the uh, pre-talkie days, and he's on his way down, and 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 his um, future girlfriend is on her way up. It's kind of a star is born kind of story. And in the artist, the actor who plays the movie star is hair slicked back, pencil thin mustache, always in a in a tux, you know, always dressed to the nines. The the, the young actress is always just incredibly fashionably dressed and they look so beautiful and they da the dance numbers and elegance and stuff. But the gobsmacking came when I saw the two actors who were in this movie playing movie stars from the 30s. When I saw them being interviewed for the movie, um, uh, the guy hadn't shaved and his hair was real shaggy. He was wearing a t-shirt and kind of a loose sweater and he was kind of looking down at his feet like that. The, the woman was wearing the same thing. You really couldn't tell much difference between the two of them in terms of how they were dressed. But they looked, when I say they looked 20 or 30 years younger than the characters they portrayed, I don't mean that in a good way. I don't mean like, they, gee, they look really healthy. I mean in, in, a, in a childish way, in an infantile way. There was something, um, there was something so clear and so um, attractive about about the characters that they played because because I think look business suits are are designed to accentuate uh, sort of these alpha male qualities broad shoulders you know narrow waist uh, uh, all of that stuff and I think in the artist when you saw these people at kind of the height of the intentional division between the way men and women looked and then you see the same two faces the actors that played the people in the 30s. In a modern setting, it's. It, I thought it was disturbing. I get the exact same thing from watching John Hamm. Um, when I see John Hamm interviewed, uh, when he was in uh, Mad Men, playing uh, Don Draper, he just looked like a, a god. Uh, when you see him interviewed in a t-shirt and stubble, he just looks like a kind of a Hollywood bum. Did you ever see the movie? Uh, I think it was called The Intern with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway. And De, yes, I know of it. De Niro is an older businessman, and he comes in to work as an intern for this young entrepreneurial woman, and uh, shows up at work with a suit and you know vest, tie every day, Natalie attired, and he's in one of these these places that's a converted warehouse or something that you know everybody's wearing t-shirts and jeans and you know roller skating around the office and stuff. Uh, there is there's something about that, I think, especially in a business setting, it almost says to the customer, um, you, we knew you were coming, we dressed for the occasion. Respect. That's what I said uh, at the beginning of this. And, I, and I'll just give you one more example uh, from, from the world of show business, not, not of casualness, but, but, but perhaps a kind of a real downside of this endless uh, march towards nothing but casualness. Um, I've been, I've probably been on stage in plays in front of an audience twice, but with rehearsals and so on for different shows, maybe four or five times. 
Uh, so I've had just enough experience to experience this, but not nearly as much as professional actors who will tell you that of all the things that make their character, wardrobe is the most important. If you put on a pair of boots, you walk differently and you feel differently and, and, and costume, clothes make the man. Uh, and there's a great deal of truth to that. It's astonishing really how, how much um, clothing uh, can, can bring out qualities in you wearing a military uniform, even wearing a military uniform, just being a goofball on a stage is enough to make you stand much straighter. And it's not a conscious thing. I don't, you, don't, you don't think I should do this because I'm, a, I'm in the military. You just, those clothes are built to be stood up in. And, and it makes me wonder that if we, if we move as we are moving rapidly to a world where no one wears a, a suit and a tie anymore, no one gets dressed up anymore, uh, where casualness is, is worshiped, I, I, I'm sure I will enjoy the physical comfort, but very much miss the sense of, um, well, I almost said power, but that's got a little more negative connotation than I want. Confidence maybe, um, uh, uh, being really well-dressed brings out civilizational qualities in a person from the inside. I can't describe it. I just, I just, I can't describe it. I just can't explain it. I don't know why it is. So we only have time for one more question. That's uh, mostly because I can hear the rising chorus of OK Boomer that's going to drown out the rest of this show. Hey, you know what? You know what, Snowflakes? I don't care if you don't care. I don't care if you don't care. There are many, 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 many things that you will never experience, and you can OK Boomer this till the skies, but it's your loss and not mine. Well, here's the, the final question I have, really, and it has to do with these. The, what sparked this uh, episode is, uh, what is, uh, if any, is the toll of losing places like Men's Warehouse, Joseph A. Bank, Brooks Brothers, Neiman Marcus, and these other places, uh, you know, where you'd go in and you'd see a guy with a cloth tape uh, hanging around his neck who was going to, you know, fit you out uh, perfectly for a new suit. And now you're just, you know, not only just buying off the rack, you know, you're going online and you're ordering, hey, send me five of these. I'll try them on and send three of them back to you. I think the guy with the cloth tape around his neck isn't going anywhere. Um, the more casual the world becomes, the more um, of an outstanding just presence of a really well-dressed man or woman will be. And it will have the same effect that it's always had, and it will probably have a greater effect, as I say, simply due to the contrast. Um, I think the people that are hurting uh, the most are, well, you mentioned these online retailers. Uh, if we just take this to its kind of its almost absurd conclusion, uh, the people that were buying suits at Sears the Sears suit salesmen were the ones who were in the most trouble first. And then the penny suit salesmen and then the, the Macy suit salesmen and so on. And, and, and you go on kind of upscale in the, in the um, department store chain. But the idea of, of well-made suits uh, is, is not going anywhere. It will never go anywhere. And, and I could say that with some confidence. The entire society can drift towards casualness all it wants to. Um, but there are people whose, whose business is power and manipulation, good and bad, and they will always understand the power that a well-dressed individual has just out of the gate. Uh, even, even if it's a, a very casual environment, uh, if somebody is, is well-dressed in a casual environment, they will have, they'll walk into a room with power and they'll leave with it too. And, and that is something that, um, that has to be experienced to really be understood. Steve Jobs was a big part of this whole destruction thing. You I was know? gonna say Steve Jobs uh, just, and Mark Zuckerberg, Jobs with the mock turtleneck, Zuckerberg with the hoodie. Yeah, well, Jobs looked good in, in what he wore. Uh, Zuckerberg <laughs> just looks like a, like a, like a clown. Um, Jobs, Steve Jobs' dress is, is and was and remains and probably defined uh, what's generally known as California cool. Uh, and California cool in a in a semi dressy situation would be a nice pair of jeans, a white button down shirt, and a and a blazer, open neck obviously, open button too. But it has a kind of a it's got kind of a swing to it. It's got kind of a look to it. That's not the same as as t shirts and and polo shirts and so on. But um, there will always be a place for people who are well dressed. And uh, the sad thing is is that as fewer and fewer people know how to tie a tie, I had to. 
I had to wear a school uniform for the first seven, eight years of my school career. So I was tying ties when I was five, I guess. Um, but as fewer and fewer people experience it, that means that the people that do know this secret will have more and more of an advantage over those people that never, ever had the opportunity. Well, here at BillWhittle.com, we've never had casual Fridays. We do have trouser-free Tuesdays, however. That's when we record our episodes of We right used Angle. to wear suits and ties for <laughs> Trifecta back at the PJTV. We did. Back in the and day. And then we ditched the suits. That's right. And the show went down the toilet at that point. It was the Nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, we still do the backstage show for members in, in T-shirts or whatever the case may be. And yeah. then when it comes time to record the right angles, we go, but at least on a, a, a dress shirt. Take a our slightly, pants off, put a dress shirt on. more formal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, if you've not yet uh, seen any episodes of Right Angle, you can see those at BillWhittle.com. Uh, this Bill Whittle Now program is not the only show we produce. In fact, between the two shows, there are more than 40 new episodes every month, thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com who fund this enterprise and uh, and keep our haberdashers in business. Uh, we appreciate their support. And if you'd like to join them, just go to BillWhittle.com and click that big green Become a Member button. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.